Timmy from Mini Bowl Design. Today I'm goofing around out in the factory. Uh, it was really, really crazy this morning, but I'm all caught up now. Uh, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm all caught up now, uh, and now I'm going to play. And when I play, I do videos. You probably noticed I've been playing a lot lately. Okay, I'm, I'm going to perform an experiment here, and I'm going to move the camera in close. Now, let me apologize right up front. If you paid attention in fifth grade science class, then you're just going to be shaking your head. But it's been brought to my attention, a lot of people were absent the day they covered fluidics in uh, fifth grade science class. So, uh, let me run you through this. <laughs> let me move the camera. Okay, here is a clear vial, which is going to represent uh, the inside of a stove. Here is Smoke Eaters Brobby's uh, Ring of Fire, one of the early ones without the pot stand. And here is one of my Slimline remotes which was recently featured in a video about remote height. Okay, now <clears throat> they had this remote, they had a piece of plastic around it, had it elevated one inch uh, to feed this stove. And they were judging where the alcohol would be in the stove by the level of the nipple. At one inch, it wouldn't flood the stove. Now, in reality, uh, the alcohol level in your stove is judged by the volume inside of this slimline remote, not by the nipple. And I, I really thought everybody knew that, but there's at least one person that swears on a stack of Bibles that I'm crazy. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to fill this remote up, right up to that shoulder, right there. And if the nipple is the alcohol level, the alcohol should be way down here. If I'm correct, and the volume inside of the slimline remote judges the alcohol level, it should be way up above the stove and obviously would flood the stove. So, let's fill this up and see what happens. Come on, come on. Got an air bubble in it. There we go. Probably going to have to speed this up because you guys aren't going to want to sit here and watch this for this long. Okay, now, when the stove was full, he had that much alcohol in the Slimline remote. So you can see that my alcohol level on this one is right here. And it's slowly dropping. You can see that if you took a Slimline remote and filled it up and plugged it into Robbie's Ring of Fire, that the alcohol level if you actually had the remote full after the stove filled up, the alcohol level would be a half an inch above the stove. That alcohol level right now is right on the rim of that. And you can see that right there, right there, it's right straight across. Water is self-leveling, has to do with gravity. So, if you take a slimline remote and fill it up and try to uh, run it on a ring of fire, uh, it's going to flood it big time, and you're going to have a fire on your hands. So, uh, now, if you lift this one inch like he did, let me, I got a shim here, show and tell here. There's a one inch shim. So, if you lift it one inch, he thought he only had, uh, had one inch of elevation inside the stove, and he thought there was no need uh, to elevate it, when in reality... Uh, if you keep filling it up the way he had it, it's so, uh, I don't know, it's coming up probably inch and a half over the top of the stove. <laughs> there you go. There's where he had it. And he thought he had one inch of alcohol in the stove when in reality, he had about two and a half inches in there. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to run anybody down or anything, but uh, I couldn't figure out why he couldn't understand this. Now, I think 
that right there as a visual aid anybody can see that water is self-leveling and if you want to know where the alcohol is in your stove look at the level on the remote when it's set beside the stove not the nipple okay now if this was an SS remote it would be at the nipple actually it'd be about a quarter of an inch above the nipple but for these types of remotes with nothing more than a tank it's where the level of the fluid is okay enough of that oh oh there's one other thing I'm, I just shot this after I finished the video and stuck it in here uh, there's one other thing I wanted to tell you which was fairly important uh, if you're running your remote and you notice that you've got it higher than it should be but the stove's not flooding there's a reason for that and the reason is that that alcohol if you're if you're running the large line you you probably immediately flood the stove in that situation but if you're running the micro line and you move the remote up you know maybe a couple inches above the stove and it still doesn't uh, flood the stove this micro line the alcohol can only it, it, this hole in the center of it is almost non-existent so the alcohol running through this can't run very fast it's it runs pretty slow and then uh, I'm using Robbie's stove for all these shows and tell. It's a good little stove, especially if you're an alkali backpacker, because this thing virtually weighs nothing. But anyway, uh, once that alcohol runs through all that line, you've probably got two feet of line, and runs through this tiny, tiny hole in this nipple, then it bumps right into carbon felt. And when it hits a carbon felt, it doesn't just go up through it. The carbon felt has to grab a hold of it, and the capillary action, that's something they teach you in science class too, capillary action has to take it and bring it up to the top and that's a slow process so if you've got the remote way above the stove and it's not flooding the stove and you think I'm crazy about this science experiment that's because if the stove is going it's burning the alcohol at the same rate that it's running into the stove I know that sounds crazy but it's the truth and on my large never never stove it burns so much alcohol that I couldn't get enough through one of these micro lines at two feet and through the wick and everything to run it. So I went to a larger line and the stove performed a lot better. So if you've got your remote high and the stove isn't flooding, just blow the stove out. Wait a minute, I'll guarantee you, once it catches up and it's not being burned off, it'll flood. And don't light it once it's that flooded. So anyway, there we go. Back to the video. Now I tried to politely uh, explain to the person what they were doing wrong and the bottom line was they told me I was stupid. Uh, and, you know, they're probably right. But anyway, for the rest of us, uh, there it is. I want to be real careful about remote height. Now, uh, I've been working on another batch of adjustable remotes because the last batch, uh, it didn't last long. <laughs> It's a hot item. <laughs> Uh, and I have enough material to make another 10 of them, I guess. Uh, so those will be in the store probably tomorrow when I finish making the insides. But uh, I'm working on some updates. And one of them is a plastic ring to put in the bottom when you have it elevated uh, really high to give you more stability. And the 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 plastic tube gets kind of funky when you get that fire up in the bottom tentacle. Thinking about that, and this tube is four inches long, so you can actually get very close to four inches of elevation. Uh, now, that's not something you're going to use a lot, but uh, let's, let's just look at this. Uh, let me just give you an example. Just happened to be looking right now. Okay. Say that your stove was setting on a stump, right here, can you see that? And that your remote was sitting on a log somewhere. Uh, you know, when you're out in the wilderness, God didn't design the earth to be flat. And it's got all kinds of bumps and glivets. And you can see right there that even with four inches of lift, I still need about a, an inch shimmer to, to actually feed that stove in that. And out in the wilderness, I, I, I think anybody that's been out in the wild knows that. 
that would not be an uncommon situation. Uh, that would be, that could be real common, depending on where you are. Uh, the Appalachian Trail shelters around here, uh, most of them are built, almost all of them I've been in have been uh, built so that the shelters here and the ground in front of it at a fairly good rate of angle goes away from it. So all the area around the shelter is, is downhill. Uh, not a good place to set up a stove. And uh, if you're in the shelter, everyone I've been in, the floor tilts from the front to the back the other way. So that's not a good place to set up a stove either. The wooden beam is usually uh, the floor and then you can sit there and, and dangle your legs over the edge and then there's about a two foot gap and then there's a big beam in the front. That beam uh, usually has a flat spot hand hewed on it and that's a good place to put your stove but even then you're going to need some, some elevation. Not this much but some. But I think with this one uh, that will give you enough to actually use this out in the wild. I'm not sure anybody's going to use these remote feed adjustable stoves out in the wild or not, but if they do, that come in kind of handy. I know it would for me. So, uh, we're having another day that's uh, in the low 60s, windy, just cold, overcast, yuck! And I, I'm, you know, Tomorrow's supposed to be a good day. I think I'm going to be able to ride my bike tomorrow, but uh, not today. Uh, I apologize for all the stuff that's out of stock in the store, but if it's out of stock, I've either run out of material, or I've run out of the ambition to build it, or I'm in the process of changing it. One of the, one of the three. And, you know, it'll probably be back in stock. I'm mixing and matching and changing stuff around all the time. Uh, always changing designs and doing things like that. Uh, I think... I've still got some uh, maybe stoves left, maybe. We'll see what tomorrow brings. But uh, the remotes, I've got to build the bottom done, so I'll probably have them back in stock tomorrow. So uh, that's basically Science Project 101, uh, Tinny and Crinamain. <laughs> I'm Tinny from Mini Bowl Design. Get out and hike, take a friend, enjoy the great outdoors, and more important than anything, try to have some fun today and try to have a really great day. Bye-bye! I also spent <laughs> some of the day out here on this mill uh, milling polycarbonate, which is uh, methanol proof. Uh, I put a piece in some methanol and left it there for two days and it didn't bother it at all. I had no effect on it whatsoever. And for the 30 years that I worked at Osram, Sylvania, they used it, uh, le the polycarbonate, lexane, uh, as a shield to shield alcohol from hitting the operators. And it was, com it was daily, it was drenched with methanol and it never bothered it at all. So, uh, anyway, uh, this stuff is, is fun stuff to mill. I'm using a 3 16th mill and I'm milling it about, with a power feed, about this fast. And then when it gets to the end, I go over a quarter of an inch, and I mill back again. This power feed is, is dreamy. And not only that, but you can take the stops on either end and move them in here, so that when it gets to the end of the cut, it shuts off, and then you hit it the other way, and it'll make the cut on the other end and shut off, uh, which is, is really handy. I really like the power feed. Uh, that's a real nice feature. Uh, and you can change the rate. Right down to nothing. That was a good investment. Okay, back to the video.